6th grade, module 3, lesson 19, classwork. Opening exercise. In the coordinate plane, find the distance between the points using absolute value. All right, so we have this point right here, which is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 4, 5. And then we have... 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 3, so this is 4, negative 3. Now their x-axes are, x-coordinates are the same. So I'm, it's, I mean it'd be simple to just count, I mean we could just count between here and here, but it wants us to find the distance using absolute value, so that's why I'm taking a different approach here. So they have the same, let's write this down. They have the same x coordinate, 4. And then we are going to, so we don't need to do anything with those. So then we're going to use 5 and negative 3. Say the y coordinates. are 5 and negative 3. So we're going to find the absolute value of each. The absolute value of 5 is 5 and the absolute value of 3, negative 3 is 3. So since they're on opposite sides of 0, 0 being the x-axis, of 0, we add them. If they were on the same side, then we would subtract. So 5 plus 3 equals 8. So the distance is 8. You can check by, like I said earlier, you could have just counted. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, exploratory challenge. Exercises 1 and 2. The length of a line segment is the distance between its endpoints. Number one, locate and label 4, 5, and 4, negative 3. I think those were the points we used on the last one. Okay, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then up 5. So that's 4, 5. And then 4, negative 3 would be right there. Draw the segment between the endpoints given on the coordinate plane. So there's a line segment. How long is the line segment that you drew? Explain. So this is just what we did before. Um, so let's say the length is 8. We can really just say the same explanation that we did up above. So. Um, the endpoints are on opposite sides of zero. So I added the absolute values of the y coordinates. So again, the absolute value of 5 is 5, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, and 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. Number 2, draw a horizontal line segment starting at 4, negative 3 that has a length of 9 units. What are the possible coordinates of the other endpoint of the line segment? So what we know is it needs to be 9 units and it needs to be a horizontal line. So coming out of he right here, 4, negative 3. So we could either go 9 units this way or we could go 9 units this way. Now, I'm going to go to the left because if I go to the right, I'm going to be off the grid. But you could go to the opposite direction if you wanted to. But I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I'll end up right there. So 
there's my horizontal line segment and I end up at let's see it is one two three four negative five negative three so what are the possible coordinates I'm gonna say negative five negative three if you went the opposite direction the nine units out all you'd have to do is since we're going along the x uh, axis is add 9 to 4 and you would end up at somewhere over here 9 plus 4 would be 13 negative 3 so those are the two choices but I'm gonna stick with negative 5 negative 3 um, let's say negative 5 negative 3 or negative 13 negative 3 I chose negative 5, negative 3 because the other point is located off the grid. Which point did you choose to be the other end point of the horizontal line segment? Explain how and why you chose the point, label, locate and label the point on the coordinate grid. So um, we actually already did all that. So you could really just write that down there and then we've already located it and labeled it. Exercise three, extending lengths of line segments to sides of geometric figures. The two line segments that you have just drawn could be seen as two sides of a rectangle. So you see that? Let me make this blue so that it looks a little more connected. So it's two sides of a rectangle here. Given this, the endpoints of the two segments would be the three vertices of the rectangle. So the endpoints right here, whoop, let me use a different color. So this, this, and this are the three vertices. So we're missing one vertice, vertex to um, complete the rectangle. A, find the coordinates of the fourth vertex of the rectangle. Explain how you find the coordinates of the fourth vertex using absolute value. Okay, so the fourth, fourth vertex, how could we find that? Well, I know that opposite sides of a rectangle are the same length. So this side we already know is eight. I'm going to count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and plot it right there. So that point is at negative five, five. But I think they want us to use absolute value. So we can explain using absolute value. So let's say the fourth vertex would be negative five, five. And let's say opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent, or we could just say the same length. So it must be, it had to be eight units long. So in order to find that, we found the absolute value of negative 3 was equal to 3, the absolute value of 5 was equal to 5, which is how we found, then we added them because they were on opposite sides of 0, and we got 8 units long. B. How does the fourth vertex that you found relate to each of the consecutive vertices in either direction? Explain. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw the rectangle here. And we want to know how this fourth vertex here relates to both of them in either direction, meaning 4, 5, and negative 5, negative 3. So let's start with how does it relate to negative 5, negative 3. Well, they both have the same y-coordinate, negative 5. So for negative 5, negative 3, they both have 
negative 5 as the x-coordinate. And that's because they're both on a vertical line segment. Because it is a vertical line. And then when we're talking about 4, 5, so here they both have the same y-coordinate because it's a horizontal line. We're talking about five, negative five, or negative five, five, sorry. Okay, draw the remaining lot sides of the triangle. I already did that. If you didn't, or sorry, of the rectangle, you should have drawn the rectangle. Exercises four through six. Using the vertices that you found and the lengths of the line segments between them, find the perimeter of the rectangle. So do you remember what perimeter means? Perimeter means that we just add up the lengths of the, all the sides. So we already know that this is eight units, this is eight units, and we had to make these in both nine units. So what we need to do is add eight plus eight plus nine plus nine, which would be equal to 16 plus 18, then 16 plus 18. 6 plus 8 is 14, carry the 1, be equal to 34 units. So the perimeter is 34 units. Find the area of the rectangle. So remember, area is equal to length times width. So if our length is 9 and our width is 8, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. All we have to do is 8 times 9 is equal to 72. And remember, the, we would have to say 72 square units, or units squared. Number 6. Draw a diagonal line segment through the rectangle with opposite vertices for endpoints. What geometric figures are formed by this line segment? What are the areas of each of these figures? Explain. Okay. So I'm going to draw a diagonal line. You can do it the other direction too. And what have we created? We've created two triangles. In particular, they are right triangles because they have right angles. So let's say it forms two right triangles. And we know we don't want to know what the area of each of these figures are. Well, we know the whole area of the whole rectangle is 72 units squared. So if we split it in two, we could also split 72 in two, because we split it into two equal triangles. So let's just take 72 and divide that in half, and that would be the area of each triangle. So I know 70 divided by 2 is 35, so 72 divided by 2 would be equal to 36 units squared for each triangle. And if we want to explain, we could say because each triangle is half the size of the rectangle. And I'm going to skip the extension. Number seven, construct a rectangle on the coordinate plane that satisfies each of the criteria listed below. Identify the coordinate of each of its vertices. Each of the vertices lies in a different quadrant, okay? So each one, we need to have one over here, 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 here. Its sides are either vertical or horizontal, so we're not doing any crazy diagonal triangles. And the perimeter is 28. So I think this is going to be the hardest one to uh, satisfy. So all the sides need to add up to 28. So let's start by just finding numbers that will add up to 28. 
So something plus something plus something is 28. And I'm going to, let's see, let's say, let's break it down into two numbers. I'm going to make them even numbers. Let's say 10 plus 18 is equal to 28. So now I'm just going to take the 10 and split it in two. So 5 plus 5, and I'm going to take 18 and split it in two. 9 plus 9. So I'm going to make a rectangle that has two sides that are five units and the other two are going to be nine. Yours doesn't have to be the same as mine. You could do it differently. So now I need to make it so that it goes through um, or goes in each of the quadrants. So I'm going to start here and go down five. And then I'm going to go to the right nine. And I'm going to go up 5. So there is my rectangle. And we can label the sides so it end up being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2. And 5, negative 3. And then we have negative 4, negative 3, and negative 4, Using absolute values, show how the lengths of the sides of your rectangle provide a perimeter of 28 units. I'm going to start with this side. So they have the same x coordinate, negative 4, but they have 2 and 3. So the absolute value of 2 is 2, absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Since they're on opposite sides, we add. And then it would be the same for the other side, because they have the same x and y coordinates. And then to find the horizontal length, this length, we're going to compare their y values. So the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Absolute value of 5 is 5. We add them because they're on opposite sides of 0. And then it would be the same for this length, too. And 5 plus 5 plus 9 plus 9 would be equal to 10 plus 18 which is equal to 28 units.